Alrighty guys, so um, uh, with all this self-isolation and uh, social distancing stuff, I thought I'd, I'd throw in uh, how to make your own buttermilk at home recipe. Just in case you can't find buttermilk at the shelf, uh, sorry, at the shops for any reason, or um, they're out of stock or whatever. But uh, now I tried this before with vinegar, it didn't seem to work as well. Um, you can basically substitute vinegar for lemon juice, but we've just got a cup of, uh, of uh, full cream milk. I've not tried it with any other milk. Uh, you might want to see how that goes, but I've also got two tablespoons of lemon juice, and I'm just going to throw that together and then give that a bit of a stir. Now, it should take, should take about a half an hour until she starts to thicken up and curdle and congeal and coagulate. Um, uh, but yeah, look, I, I did one uh, uh, earlier um, in one of my other experiments and I found that uh, what actually happened was, uh, depending on how uh, warm it, the ambient temperature was and the environment was, uh, was dependent on how long it actually took before it curdled. So generally about half an hour minimum till she starts to get a bit lumpy. Um, but yeah, it may take a bit longer than that depending on where you are. But yeah, we'll come back in a moment and we'll just check to see how lumpy she gets and so what you're looking for as well. Cheers. Alrighty guys, it's been about an hour. Uh, I, I know I said about minimum a half an hour. It's been about an hour. Have a look here. You can actually see there's lumps formed in there now and it's basically curdled and started to coagulate. So that's what you're looking for there, guys. Um, white vinegar will work, as I mentioned before, but I find lemon juice just works that bit better. And then what I might actually do is just stir that up a bit with a whisk. And then uh, that's going to be the basis of my uh, brine. To that, per cup, I add one tablespoon of uh, cooking salt or kosher salt. Um, and yeah, I find that's a uh, that's perfect amount of salt to the brine, uh, to the buttermilk. Cool, we'll move on to the next stage. Okay guys, so we're gonna prep the chicken a little bit now. Um, all I'm gonna do here is just grab a mallet. Now I prefer to use the flat side. What I find, um, and also have, see how you've got this, this lumpy side, have the flat side sitting up. I just find it helps to have the, the chicken cook a little bit more evenly. Um, so all I do is just usually, just, the, usually just the fat side over here that I sort of hammer down. Sometimes you might want a little bit under there just to hammer that out, just to even it out a little bit more. And so that when you cook it, that you're not gonna have any bits that are undercooked in there. And that's basically it. And then what I do from there is, I've got my buttermilk now. Now I've actually stuck some, uh, the salt in there now. So I've chucked in uh, a tablespoon of salt for every cup of buttermilk that I've got. And then I just pop that in there and I dunk that in and then I leave that overnight. Okay guys, so we're back and we've got here the, uh, the dredge or the the dry coating recipe. And now I've modified this a bit, uh, just to, over the time I've tweaked things a little. Now this isn't my final recipe, but this will get you a bit more of a lighter uh, crunch and a bit more of a lighter batter. Um, so what I've actually done, I've put one and a half cups of plain flour. Uh, I've also put a half a cup of corn flour one tablespoon of paprika. Again, see if you can find that paprika that um, 
uh, it smells like bacon. It's, it's awesome once you're onto it. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, a one tablespoon of chicken stock. Thanks Lance Rosen for that tip. Um, one tablespoon of Mexican chili if you guys and Mexican chili powder if you guys in Australia or for the guys uh, outside of Australia and America. Uh, just your normal chili powder that you'd make. Um, also two teaspoons of cooking salt. Uh, chicken salt if you can get it for the guys in Australia. Um, even you guys in the US I'm seeing it more and more popular. Cooking salt or kosher salt. If you guys in the States, uh, two teaspoons of cooking salt, kosher salt or chicken salt, whatever is available, whatever is in your cupboard, especially if this coronavirus business is going on. And then I'll also put one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and also to lighten up the batter a little bit more, one teaspoon of baking powder. Now you can vary those spice levels as to however you like it. Uh, I find that's actually not all that hot, um, but it adds a bit more spice flavor. You can change the darkness of the, uh, uh, change the darkness of the batter just by varying the amount of paprika. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a pretty, pretty solid base for you guys to be able to tweak. You might wanna add some herbs and some other spices as well, but that's a great base recipe to start with. Cool, so we've had our chicken, our chicken thigh fillet sitting in the buttermilk brine overnight. That buttermilk brine, um, uh, in case you missed it, is basically one tablespoon of salt, of uh, cooking salt or kosher salt, to one cup, sorry, um, two cups of buttermilk. Okay, so what we're gonna do, now we're gonna actually dredge this above, uh, sorry, we're gonna shake this above the flour. Now what that's gonna do, I'm gonna just mix that through with my hand, is when you go to put this in now, it's gonna be all these little craggy bits in there. And that'll help with uh, that, uh, that fully fluffy, sort of all those crispy bits coming up on the chicken. So we'll chuck that in now, and I'll cover that with flour. Now you wanna swap hands at this stage. Turn that over, really push that in, make sure that's, that's right in there. And as you're pushing it in, you're actually pushing those little uh, craggy bits that you've uh, set up by dripping some of the buttermilk in there. You're pushing that into the actual uh, surface itself. So if you can actually see that, see how it's got those, those tiny little bits starting to come up there? Okay, and that's pretty much it. There's a little bit there that I missed. Just make sure she's nicely covered. And then you wanna sh shake all that excess off. Uh, it just helps uh, keeping your oil fairly clean as well. There's a bit there that we've missed. A bit there that we've missed as well. Okay, and so what I did different last time is I let that sit for 15 minutes. I would not recommend doing that now. I'd actually recommend sticking that straight in the deep fryer. So if you just want to sc scroll over here, just have a look at that. Okay, and we're gonna stick that in the deep fryer very shortly. Cheers. Alrighty guys, so we're just checking the oil to see it's hot enough. Now these instant read thermometers come in really handy. It's not necessary, but 350, it's a bit over 350. That's fine. Um, now if you've got a, uh, uh, a deep fry at home, just note that the green light obviously means go, that she's ready to go. So we'll stick this fried chicken in. What you can do if you don't have an instant read thermometer, as I mentioned on another video, just grab a saute skewer, like a bamboo saute skewer, and then just pop that in the oil. And uh, once that starts bubbling, the skewer starts bubbling, you know she's ready. So I'm gonna pop this in slowly. Just remember, away from you. Now look at that baby go. You can actually see, you can actually see a tiny bit 
of, uh, of a crunchy bit sort of rising out of the oil there. Look at that baby go. Look at that sizzling away there. You can actually see the crunchy bits that come out. They might surface. And they're gonna be super duper crunchy. Now, what you'll notice is around the four minute mark, depending on how thick your, your uh, cut of meat is, if it's breast you're using, just be mindful. Make sure you, you flatten it about, flatten it out with the mallet. Um, just to make it a nice even size. It'll also cook a bit quicker. Um, but yeah, you just need to make sure that it's cooked the whole way through. Now, one easy way to tell is usually you'll notice the bubbles start to die down a bit uh, as you won't be bubbling as furious. And usually that's around the four minute mark, depending on how thick it is. If it's a, thicker, uh, a thinner thigh, it can be around the three minute mark. If it's uh, if it's a thinner thigh around the three minute mark, if it's a thicker thigh around the four minute mark, uh, maybe even longer. But yeah, an instant read thermometer will help you guys just to make sure she's cooked. Um, but play around with the times, usually around the four minute mark is just about right. Okay guys, so we're at about the four minute mark. Oh, do you look at that? That is gonna be so crispy and because of the buttermilk brine, so juicy as well and flavorful. So that's about the color you want. If you wanna go um, a bit darker, just add more uh, paprika, but that's pretty much it. So it's quite often, you know, if she'll get around the four minute mark, I might just give her an extra 30 seconds just to make sure she's cooked the whole way through. So as promised, uh, there was a request to see me biting into this for some reason. I don't know what the fetish is, but uh, here we go. This is it's really hard. Look at all those crispy bits. See out there? Okay, here we go. Oh no. Oh my God, that's addictive. If any of you guys that know me, you know probably the last two months now, I've just been eating fried chicken nonstop. See how juicy that is in there. I'm not sure if that's gonna focus, but that's incredible. So, Thanks for watching again. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring up my hot and spicy. A lot of been, people have been requesting my hot and spicy video. I'll do that up next. Thanks very much for watching, guys.